Hi, this is Steve Mackay. I'm doing a quick presentation on Smart Instruments, Fuel Bus, Ethernet, and Industrial Wireless. Um, this is one of our standard uh, recordings, um, and uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, if not, try and look at your audio wizard, see if you can get that going. We run these every uh, week. Uh, my name, as I said, is Steve Mackay. Let me just change my color something a little bit more appealing, uh, maybe purple. Dean of Engineering, I've worked in industrial automation for uh, 30 years and um, mainly in mining, oil and gas, electrical and manufacturing industries. So this is a little presentation. Um, we're obviously recording and it's really looking at nuts and bolts of smart instrument standards. So I'm trying to give you a little bit of a perspective there. Uh, and looking at um, Ethernet and then finally uh, looking at industrial wireless. So just to give you a few suggestions about the ways going forward, um, there's an expression about standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, I would quite happily tell you that these slides are often taken from other engineers uh, and I've acknowledged them on the slides themselves. So thank you very much and I've acknowledged you guys who've help me, you'll see your names on the slides. So really, as far as digital technologies are concerned, um, we've got quite a range of standards, and uh, probably there's hundreds of standards out in the world today, ranging from ASI bus, very simple, mainly digital, device net, uh, Alan Bradley, Rockwell automation favorite, Profibus DP, Profibus is probably arguably the number one field bus standard today. EP is a RS-485 standard. Then you've got Profibus PA, which is very useful for intrinsically safe environments. Foundation field bus, heart, and then the giant lurking in the back of the room is Ethernet. Uh, but as we point out, very cheap price, very easy to use, but as far as the field is concerned, probably not quite at the field yet. Uh, field bus advantages, um, I'll leave you to uh, look at these, but basically the original reason for using field bus is because of wiring savings, but probably you get a lot more information uh, than with the standard 4 to 20 milliamp, which many of you have grown up on, including me, 4 to 20 milliamp. Trying to write here, in a very famous standard, 4 to 20. Um, the idea with field buses is you have significant space savings. As an example, 256 I.O. now 4000 I.O. Um, which field bus to select? Well, as I said, with hundreds of standards, it's very hard to come up with an answer there, but probably the best answer is look at the long-term cost of ownership, look at who you've got to support you for the various field buses. Um, and we'll give you a few examples here. You may use Azibus for a simple bottling plant. If you've got a motor vehicle manufacturing plant, you'll probably be using Profibus DP uh, for your variable speed drives. Uh, if you've got a continuous process plant, you may use Profibus DP for your MCC, motor control center. PLCs may be connected with Modbus, and you may use Foundation Field Bus for CPPs, continuous process plant. So, it's quite a range there. So here's a typical example of field bus, uh, foundation field bus, which is very strong in the oil and gas industry. Um, you've got the high speed Ethernet system there, and then down at this level, you've got the traditional field bus coming through there. So very low speed, 31.25 kilobits a second, and you can have up to 2 to 32 devices, pretty well established uh, at the field level. And you can go up to 1,900 meters in length using fairly standard cabling and use uh, playing Lego, a very simple way of uh, writing a program using Lego blocks, as it were. Profibus is the other standard, and as I say, probably arguably Profinet is the dominant um, standard today. Um, Profibus DP, as I mentioned, is at the field level. Profibus PA for intrinsically safe environment, and you then got Profinet sitting on top of Ethernet and TCPIP. So I'll come back to that in a tick. Uh, Ethernet and TCPIP is probably the giant in the room and the standard which will be 
probably taking over. So you get a lot of variations with Ethernet plus TCP IP. You can get foundation field bus stuck on top, HSE, Profinet on top, and even the venerable Modbus standard, which I mentioned earlier on, Modbus uh, over TCP. So that all sits on top. So this is really the, probably the widest use of um, communications is Ethernet. But as far as the field level is concerned, you don't really see Ethernet yet, but arguably in the short term you will see it at the instrument level. Um, just a few words now about industrial wireless, um, which is really exciting, and I must thank uh, Dr. Peter Fuhr for these um, slides. Uh, as he's pointed out, uh, wireless is growing very fast. This is an example of uh, a massive growth in the states of uh, cell phones. So cell phones are not what we're really going to talk about, but there's obviously some uh, wireless involved there. Um, but we're rapidly developing as we speak. So the sensor market is rapidly growing, 11 billion in 2001. And um, probably the biggest component of wiring uh, is the wiring, which is $100 billion cost. So what we're saying is if you can avoid the wiring, uh, you could probably save yourself a lot of money using industrial wireless. Um, and here's a sort of typical example of some of the market uh, growth rates. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, the idea is uh, what you do with the data. Uh, in the old days, we've had the output of the sensor hardwired, 4 to 20 million, 0 to 10 volts. Uh, to a PLC. The idea now is to get some sort of um, wireless system to grab that data and use layered communications, the OSI model. Uh, TCP IP over Ethernet has a, also a layered version, but it's a simplified version. It doesn't use the seven layers. Interesting enough, HSC, the foundation field bus, is actually another layer, which is not on here, called the user layer. So. It's a very structured way of doing things. As far as industrial wireless is concerned, there's three big standards, Zigbee, Wireless Heart, and the ISA 100A. That, by the way, is changing rapidly as we speak. So Zigbee and Wireless Heart, just a few, minutes, a few moments about this, based on very similar underlying physical technology, the radio frequency technology, based around the good old IEEE 802.15.4 standard, very limited power consumption, low throughput requirements using direct sequence spread spectrum. Um, ISA 100A is also, again, based on the same physical level, operates at 2.4 gigahertz, get a speed of 250 kilobits a second, um, and obviously supports a whole range of industrial technologies such as foundation field bus, profit bus, heart, and Ethernet, and recently ratified. Well, that slide's a few years old. So the idea is that in any plant, you would probably get a range of uh, industrial um, standards, possibly bus DP down here, to your motors, mode bus RTU, DSA, to your sensors, and Ethernet at the top. So, and then you probably hook that into a wireless system as well. So here's a sort of typical structure uh, showing you the different uh, systems connecting together. Device net, Profi bus, or even Lonworks. Lonworks is very common in the um, building management area, industrial controllers, and then of course at the upper end, Ethernet. There's some questions about whether Ethernet will even, as I say early on, will go down to the field level. Probably it will do. So just a few thanks to Dr. Peter Fuhr for the supporting slides and obviously the wireless industrial uh, networking. Uh, agency, I think it is WINA, who basically focus on industrial wireless. And thanks, Dr. Peter Fuhr, for um, using your slides for the wireless part. Any questions, just shoot, shoot them off to me, Steve Mackay. I'll be delighted to answer them. Thank you very much for listening into this presentation. This is Steve Mackay signing off now. Thank you very much. <laughs>